It's VSW's 2017 WWE Money in the Bank Review. I am your host, the leader of VSWville, VSW. Hello, all my VSWville members. How you all doing? It is your boy, the leader of VSWville, VSW, and today I'm going to share all of you my review on WWE 2017 Money in the Bank. Let's get to it. All right, we're going to start with the first ever Women's Money in the Bank ladder match and the participants being the first ever SmackDown Live Women's Champion, Becky Lynch, Tamina, Natalia, and the fabulous princess of Staten Island, Carmella. The good is that the five women made history and gave it their all, especially Charlotte Flair's amazing move from the top turn buckle. Of course, the bad is the ending of the match because the match was good. I was liking the match until James Ellsworth pushed Becky Lynch right off the ladder. Well, she was still on the ladder, but when he pushed her, she just landed right on the rope. And even though he wasn't in the match, he still proceeded to climb the ladder, retrieve the briefcase, and just drop it to Carmella so she could become the first ever Miss Money in the Bank. <laughs> That's what I think. The ugly is a tie between the latter hit Becky Lynch in the face and Tamina slinging Natalia on the ladder. So, my final verdict for the first ever Money in the Bank ladder match with the women, it was good until the end. So I give it a 3 out of 5. It was still a good match, but the ending sucked. I hope Becky Lynch will one day be able to get her hands on James Ellsworth and make him pay for costing her the money in the bank briefcase. Becky Lynch versus James Ellsworth. Daniel Bryan, Shane McMahon, I've got two words for you. Book it. Next up is the first championship match of the night where the Usos defends the SmackDown Live tag titles against the longest reigning WWE World Tag Team Champions in history, The New Day. The good here is that not only was it a good match and The New Day was close to becoming the new SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions, we got to see Kofi Kingston's amazing leap from the top turnbuckle and submission maneuver of his own. The bad is the ending where even though the Usos retained the tag titles like I predicted, it was via countout, giving the New Day the win. The ugly is a tie between Kofi Kingston's nasty fall and the double suplex onto the ring post. The steel post, my mistake. So like I said, I do see the New Day as the SmackDown Live World Tag Team Champions one day. But last night just wasn't their night. Even though they won the match, they didn't win the title because titles can't change hands on a countout. But like the Uso said, it is not paranoia. It's the Usos. Next up is the second championship match where Naomi defends the SmackDown women's title against the ravishing Lana. The good is Naomi retains the SmackDown Live Women's Championship by making Lana tap out with her submission maneuver, and Lana did do well in her first match representing SmackDown Live. Lana did pretty good. She came up short, but she did pretty good. The bad is Carmella coming out in the middle of the match, thinking about cashing it in, I guess, making it a triple threat. So to me, that was absolutely pointless. The ugly is when Lana suplexed Naomi onto the ropes more than once, landing on her ankle. All in all, it was an alright match. Not the best match of the night, definitely, but not that bad either. Money in the bank, Lana felt the glow. 
Next up is the second championship match where Naomi defends the SmackDown women's title against the ravishing Lana. The good is Naomi retains the SmackDown Live Women's Championship by making Lana tap out with her submission maneuver, and Lana did do well in her first match representing SmackDown Live. Lana did pretty good. She came up short, but she did pretty good. The bad is Carmella coming out in the middle of the match, thinking about cashing it in, I guess, making it a triple threat. So to me, that was absolutely pointless. The ugly is when Lana suplexed Naomi onto the ropes more than once, landing on her ankle. All in all, it was an alright match. Not the best match of the night, definitely, but not that bad either. Money in the bank. Lana felt the glow. Next is the third championship match where the modern day Maharaja and current WWE champion defends against the Viper and 2017 Royal Rumble winner Randy Orton. There was even a moment in the match where we see Jinder Mahal put Randy Orton and Ric Flair's figure four leg lock submission maneuver and Ric Flair was sitting in the audience with the other legends including Sergeant Slaughter and many others. The good here is that Jinder Mahal retained the WWE Championship because I don't think that it's time for the modern day Maharaja to lose the championship yet. Now don't take this as me being a fan of Jinder Mahal because I'm not. But he's not horrible either. I don't love him but I don't absolutely hate him. The bad is not only did Randy Orton fail to regain the WWE Championship in his hometown and he almost won it with the RKO out of nowhere until the Sin Brothers got involved again but they had the audacity to put their hands on Randy Orton's father Cowboy Bob Orton and that was a big no no the ugliest read is Randy Orton beating the heck out of the Sin Brothers for putting their hands on his father by slamming and RKOing them on the floor and through the announce tables. And that's what they get because putting your hands on Randy Orton's father is something that you don't ever, ever, ever want to do. You put your hands on Randy Orton's father and he will beep you up. Next, we got Bree Zongo making their way to the ring to find out who the two mystery guys responsible for destroying their office and attacking Tyler Breeze are. Who are they? None other than Connor and Victor, the Ascension. The good thing about this match is that we finally know who was responsible for all this fashion thing and Bree Zongo got the win. The bad thing is it was short. The ugly was Tyler Breeze got struck in the face with an Ascension member's knee. So it looks like the mystery has finally been solved and Brizongo are good guys now. Before we get to the main event, let's talk about the tag team match that happened on the kickoff show where the reunited Hype Bros goes up against the Colognes. The good is Zack Ryder finally returned from injury to reunite with his partner Mojo Raleigh to go to Money in the Bank and defeat the Cologne. The bad is the Cologne mocked Zack Ryder and that's all I can think of for a bad. I don't think there is an ugly but for what it was it was a good match and I'm glad that the hype bros are reunited. Zack Ryder welcome back to the WWE. Woo! Woo, woo, you know it, bro. Now, of course, in my predictions, I thought that the WWE Championship match was going to be the main event with my dumb self. But let's get to the moment you have been waiting for, the real main event, where the six Money in the Bank male participants, AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, Dolph Ziggler, Baron Corbin, Sami Zayn, 
and the two-time U.S. champion, a.k.a. the new face of America, Kevin Owens, battle it out for the Money in the Bank briefcase, where, of course, as you know the rules, the winner gets a WWE title opportunity whenever and wherever they want. The good is, it was a fun watch match where all six men gave it their all and Shinsuke Nakamura returned after getting attacked by Baron Corbin during his entrance. I don't think there is a bad except I got the prediction wrong because I predicted that Sami Zayn would win. The ugly is Sami Zayn's powerbomb to Dolph Ziggler from the top rung of the ladder. Sami Zayn slammed to Kevin Owens on the apron and AJ Styles fall from holding the money in the bank briefcase. Thankfully, he was able to continue the match, but yeah, that was a hard fall. Hope he'll be alright after that. But, whether we like it or not, whether we like him or not, Baron Corbin is 2017's Mr. Money in the Bank. But, one thing that the leader of VSWville and the YouTube World Heavyweight Champion can't say is that the ending to the Males Money in the Bank match was so, so, so much better than the female Money in the Bank ending. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the champions, Money in the Bank 2017 WWE Review. My favorite part is the males, Money in the Bank ladder match. Worst part, the ending to the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. What are your reviews and thoughts on Money in the Bank this year? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? What match did you like? What match did you not like? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below as always because sharing your opinion and your thoughts is always caring. So, this is it. God bless. Take care. Stay safe. And welcome to VSWville. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to see more, as always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We are professional wrestling fans for life and that's the bottom line because V S W said so. Fist bump push